And with Ty's talk at the beginning of my show, of course, is that music, which means it's time for my sermon. Yes, the Sunday sermon every Sunday morning. And the big question in the leadership debate. Do you remember the great William Shakespeare, one of our finest, finest, finest uh, Englishmen? He posed the question in his great work, Hamlet, to be or not to be. Well, I'm thinking we should adapt that because the big question at the moment seems to be to tax or not to tax. That is the huge difference, the fundamental difference between the two leadership candidates. Camp Rishi, they want to tax and spend. The consocialist ex-chancellor seems to be able to spend your money better than you can. Whereas Camp Lizzie, she wants to t cut taxes and grow. Who's right? Who's wrong? Who's going to spend money better? Rishi's worried about your credit card. Really? You know, I think that there's a serious, serious uh, continuation under Camp Rishi where he's not actually a conservative. No, no, no. He's a con-socialist. He wants to tax more and spend more. There's no talk anywhere of reforming anything. There's no talk of cutting wasteful government spending that we all see everywhere. And lucky Lizzie, well, she talks about cutting taxes, but I would argue she's not focusing on the areas where you need to cut taxes fastest, most urgently, which are consumer taxes, because that would automatically, mathematically, reduce inflation. If you cut taxes on consumer goods, the price of the good goes down, and therefore inflation goes down. It's a mathematical fact. She's focusing on cutting business taxes, but if you cut consumer taxes, you'll help with the cost of living crisis. And my concern is that neither of them are talking about any real measures to solve the cost of living crisis. And when we talk about tax cuts, there are many who seem to question what I think is a basic economic fact totally backed up by the evidence. Because we've got here in the UK, we've got the highest taxes for some 70 years. It's over 35% of the size of our economy is now taxed. Over 35%. So that is about 36% and rising. And yet you look at the US, for example, their total tax take is about 26%, 27%. Is it a coincidence that they consistently have higher growth? Let's look at Singapore. Their tax rate is extraordinary, below 20%, and their growth rate consistently higher than the UK. Let's look at our friends down in Australia. Their tax take as a percentage of the size of their economy, it's about 28% consistently. And guess what? Their growth rate is consistently higher. So much so that if we'd grown our economy at the same rate as the Australians have in the last 15 years, Every single year, our tax revenues would be around about £150 billion pounds more. Just imagine, if every single year I gave you another NHS, not the existing one, but an additional one, that's the sort of quantity we're talking about. That's the benefit of growth. The more growth you get, then as a direct consequence, you get more tax revenues over the medium term. And I think it's absolutely vital. Again, look back at the evidence. In the 1950s, when taxes were being cut, yeah, growth went up. In the 1980s, Mrs Thatcher cut taxes and yes, guess what? Growth went up. But in the last decade, under supposedly a conservative low-tax philosophy, taxes have gone up and growth has gone down. And so the Rishi camp, they're focusing on what they say is, oh, yes, but last year we had the highest growth in the G7. Well, there's a reason for that, because the previous year, in 2020, we had the greatest fall in growth, because we had such a heavy lockdown. Those of us who are sensible, we're focusing on what's going to happen next year, not what happened last year. And at the moment, the forecast for next year is that we're going to have the lowest growth, I think, in the G20, except... Russia. Brilliant. Great. That's something to look forward to, isn't it? I mean, unbelievable. Now, let's remember also that Rishi's worrying about debt. He keeps saying, 
we've got a debt problem. We haven't, Rishi. We've got a growth problem. There isn't any. And you've been the Chancellor. Let's remember, 45% of the national debt is actually sitting on the Bank of England computer. It's not external debt. I've been saying for 12 months we should reallocate all of that into a 75-year, call it a corona war-like bond, fix the interest rate, you can fix it at 1%, and you've dealt with it, right? We don't need to worry about it anymore. The reality is we've actually had, at times of emergency and war, much higher debt levels than this for 30 years between the two world wars. We had debt at least 50% higher than now. But when growth came back, when they cut taxes after the Second World War, the economy grew, and therefore the debt, as a percentage of the size of the economy, reduced. And the government's balance sheet is strong. I keep saying, we've got a trillion quids worth. A trillion! I know it's impossible to imagine what that is. It's almost half our national debt. A trillion quid of treasure under our feet. It's called shale gas, and there's no debate about that amongst these two leadership candidates. So I want you, any of you, if you're Conservative members, get in touch with your MPs. What's their view on shale gas? The Business Secretary, Mr Kwarteng, he's sitting on a report that he won't publish on shale gas. No one is talking about the biggest opportunity to ease the national finances. Now again, Rishi always talks, he sounds very credible, doesn't he? He says, we don't want to load up the credit card borrowing. Well, I think that actually shows how little he understands about businesses, small, medium and large. Because we all know businesses don't borrow using a credit card. They borrow using medium and long term debt. That's what they do, Rishi, because that's what makes a company grow. You borrow to invest, to grow, and you grow over the medium term, and that's how you reduce and pay off your borrowings. You don't use a credit card and worrying about paying it off next month in order to invest in the long-term growth of your business. Well, if you do, you need to get some other borrowing methods. That is my clear experience. And therefore, the same is true with sovereign nations. Sovereign nations borrow over the long term using fixed rates. That's what you should do. But of course, our Treasury, foolishly, about a quarter of our national debt, they linked to the rate of inflation. You couldn't make it up, could you? They linked a quarter of our borrowing to the rate of inflation, so our borrowing cost has gone up. That is foolish, but it's still not too late to change it. And yet no one is talking about these basic things. And I just have a simple motto. I'm absolutely convinced that everyone listening and watching and all your friends and family, anybody else you know, you're all capable. We, we all spend a pound in our pockets and get more value, more wisely, than a civil servant spending it on your behalf. It's a fact of life, folks. Higher taxes means lower growth. And I think Camp Rishi need to learn that basic lesson. And that, this morning, is my Sunday sermon.